Hello everybody and welcome to episode 2 of the Inside Eurosoft podcast. I'm recording this on Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021. Yeah, it's actually been two weeks since the first episode. Time flies. It's quite a weird year, isn't it? I told you in the trailer of the Inside Eagles of Podcast that we intend to release an episode every two weeks, but that is definitely not set in stone. We'll see how feasible that is in the long run. Of course, there are phases when there's more to talk about and phases when there's less to tell. I hope we can find a good balance and perhaps expand the podcast in other forms in the future, inviting some other people from outside of the company maybe, we'll see simply to offer you an interesting additional form of content about EgoSoft and uh, our game X4 Foundations. Before we jump into today's main topic, I wanted to give you some more general information about the upcoming 4.10 update, which the team has been working on for a while now. We've already talked about multiverse team seasons in episode one of this podcast, so you know that that will be a part of it. If the Multiverse Team Seasons will be in the first version of the 4.10 beta remains to be seen, that uh, hasn't been finally decided so far. As you may or may not know, we tend to update the beta versions frequently, so if it isn't in beta 1, it will surely be added to a later version of that 4.10 beta. Now another new element is today's main topic, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. As usual, our free main game updates are not only introducing new gameplay features, but are mainly full of improvements as well as fixes. In episode 1, Bernd had mentioned already that a couple of behind-the-scenes improvements were going to be introduced in 4.10 that we weren't able to include in 4.0. Specifically, that's um, about changes to the engine, and in one particular case for 4.10, it's about improving the asset management in X4 Foundations. For you, the player, this should result in a better use of graphical memory and it should improve things like asteroids popping in, among other things, of course. If you want to find out more already about the upcoming 4.10 beta, please visit our forum at forum.egosoft.com. In the general X4 forum, you will find a recent thread started by Bernd himself, listing elements that we plan to include, improve on and fix. Just to be very clear, everything you will see in that thread is planned for the 4.10 beta. It doesn't mean that the final public 4.10 update will include all of these listed things. I mean, the beta is there for beta testing, right? So the team will have to see how the beta goes and acts accordingly, as usual. And you know, things change. It's as simple as that, really. Now, some of you have discovered something online about what might be next for X4. Um, proper announcements for that are also coming, but probably a little later this summer. Same story here. Things change, pieces are moving around, and when we start talking about it, we want to make sure you get the proper story, the full story, and not one that might set wrong expectations and cause frustration later on. Now, enough with the intro. Today I've invited another colleague of mine to chat about a specific new gameplay feature that is coming soon to X4 Foundations. That guest is Owen, aka Xenon Slayer, programmer and part of the missions team at Egosoft. And you might recognize his voice when you hear it in a bit. This is episode 2 of the Inside Egosoft podcast on the custom game start. Welcome, Owen, and uh, thanks for joining me for episode two of the Inside Egosoft podcast. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Owen, for our listeners who don't follow you on Twitch already or haven't heard about you before, um, could you just introduce yourself uh, to our listeners? Yeah, uh, my name's Owen, and I've been working with Egosoft for about 13 years. Wow. And I've spent a few good years in Germany in the office. But at the moment, I'm back in England. I moved back a few years ago. But basically still still in the same role as you were um, before, right? Yeah. Um, I started with uh, mission development, uh, writing stories for Terran Conflict and X Rebirth. And now I'm kind of in a supporting role on the mission side because the team's grown. Uh, but yeah, I'm also generally just uh, working on a multitude of things, uh, not just missions, but... Yes, I've picked up a lot of stuff over the years. 
we have this traditional way, I, I want to say almost, of people joining Ego Software. It's, you know, obviously people that have played the X games before, but very specifically people that have been into modding and have been part of the community for years that then end up joining the company and then working on it um, full time. Is that a similar story for you? For sure. I started playing the X games back in, it must be 2001, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I started getting into the modding scene in X2, where we had the uh, scripting in-game editor, which uh, was one of my first forays into programming. And I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And then when X3 came along, I jumped into the DevNet and started testing. So I got to see firsthand the feedback that we gave and the changes being made by the developers back then. And uh, that got me interested in the whole process. Cool, cool. And um, of course, <laughs> I guess most of the X4 players will have recognized your voice. You're the voice of Bozo Ta in X4 Foundations. I was always interested in hearing how that came about. Yeah, so um, for X3 Terran Conflict, which was my first proper project with Egosoft, uh, that was when I moved out to Germany. That was just after I finished college. And I was the token English guy in the office. And <laughs> I was in charge of not only doing some of the uh, voice page writing and things like that, making sure that the scripts got to the recording studio that we had locally. Uh, I went there, met up with some of the actors and uh, did a bit of directing. And then also just got involved myself with uh, some of the English voice pages. Well, that was my first voice acting gig. And every now and again, I do it again. But I think Bozo is the character that now stands out for everyone. Right. We, we can't stop using that guy. He has so much to say. Yeah, I'm sure we will hear more from him in the future, right? Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> Perfect. So um, the main topic for today is a new feature that will very likely be introduced during the 4.10 beta phase. And we call it custom game start. Among other things, some of that you have already mentioned, you've also been working on this. Could you give our listeners a short summary of what that new feature is? Yeah. So in X4 and all the other X games, when you start a new game, you're usually presented with a number of game starts where we've tried to give you different avenues into the game depending on what your styles are whether you want to be a trader or whether you want to jump into the story or you want to role play as a certain race things like that uh, and what we want to give in 4.10 is a new editor that allows you to create your own game start within rules and we want to give the player as much freedom as we can within those rules so mm -hmm. we're going to give them all kinds of options for them to set up uh, property and money and things like mm -hmm. that. So is, is that something that is like something completely new for the X series or um, have we been doing something similar in, in previous X games before? Yeah, I would say we've done things similar mm -hmm. because in the past we've had uh, in-game editors that were used for development, things like the Galaxy Editor where we put together the map, place stations around, and that was also available for modders. Mm -hmm. But of course, that wasn't really something we presented to the players as an actual game feature. That okay. was just a tool more than anything. Actually, um, in X3 Farnham's Legacy, which was recently released, mm -hmm. that also has its own in-game game start editor. So that is presented to the player saying, if you want to mess around with the universe, your game start, then this is how you do it. And I, I've been playing around with that a little bit, and that's a bit of fun. But that does result in a modified game because you can do anything in there. You could give yourself a crazy big fleet. Yeah, and, and, and the way I understand it, as the, the feature currently stands, so to say, as I mean, you and, and other team members are still working on it, we are right now like trying to find the balance of where the border is, so to say, between um, your safe game still being... Uh, unmodified, classified as unmodified, so to say, mm -hmm. or um, if you move into the, the modified part, that's not right now fully defined, I think. And, and, and you guys are still working on that, right? Yeah. So uh, the way it's going to work is that as you progress through the game in your current save, you'll be unlocking like milestones, achievements, and we're going to be taking what you've done in the past and giving that to the editor, and then you'll get a budget to play mm -hmm. with. And then you can, depending on what you've done in the past, whether you it was a story decision, 
uh, how much money you got, how big your fleet was, that will then affect different budgets. Within those budgets, you can play around and your game will not be modified. And then you can continue on into that new save and yeah, whatever you decide to do, whether it's some crazy story combination that you've never done before or putting up your home base in a different sector, there's a lot of different things we'll hopefully uh, be able to present to the players. Mm -hmm. And if I understand it correctly, like you, um, you, you just talked about the budgets and, and those are categorized into specific groups of budgets, so to say, right? Yeah. So I'm not sure how this is going to come across to the player, but there are going to be certain milestones that we define that give certain points to the budget and things like whether you've had a five-star pilot before mm -hmm. or whether you've uh, wiped out a Xenon sector, which is probably a favorite of mine. <laughs> We're going to put points to those. And like I said, the menu will then be able to categorize them and give you the budget that makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. So if you're very good at fighting, then maybe you'll be able to create a bigger fleet or things like that. Yeah, I think the one that, um, because I'm working on missions, I'm more most interested in the story aspect where we have since, uh, I think it was 3.0 with the uh, Paranid and the split story, we had uh, storylines where you could branch off. You had decisions and depending on what those decisions are, the universe would change. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is if you've taken one path, we'll allow you in the editor to then select the other path. And you can drastically change what the universe looks like at the game start, depending on these choices, what factions are around and who's at war with who, well, what factions are no longer around. So that's going to be really cool. Could I say it's an easy way into experiencing more of X4, like, or different, different areas of the game? Yeah, not many people are going to see every part of the game, especially in one save game. Right. Depending on where you make your home base or whether you want to focus on a war in a certain area, uh, some players just don't care about fighting, but this would give them an opportunity to break out of their comfort zone, maybe throw themselves at a different problem. Mm -hmm. We like seeing people do new game starts. That's why we create loads of new game starts and loads of different scenarios. And uh, yeah, I hope this... Uh, because it can put you in an advanced situation relatively easy. Hopefully that means that more people will jump into it, start new games, just try out being a, a mogul with thousands of factories out there. Not saying that the editor is going to give you thousands of factories <laughs> within the budget. But uh, I mean, for myself, I never really get that far into X Games where I have massive fleet. Yeah. But maybe I've achieved enough for the menu to give me that and then I can uh, experience that finally. From the, the feedback and the, the community stuff that I see, um, because it's, you know, that's, that's part of my job. I always get the impression that, that the community is um, very much divided into those who really prefer sticking to their one safe game for, let's say, as long as possible. And then you have the guys who are more comfortable with, um, let's say, jumping around or jumping into a new game to change the way that they approach stuff. You're not just um, a part of the development team. You're also um, still an, an avid player of X4. You do your own streams and everything. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite approach? Yeah, I'm, I'm always a fan of uh, starting fresh every now and again because I really enjoy the early game. Uh, ever since like starting the older games, I liked starting in a small ship and upgrading that ship. And the universe kind of opens up for you. Mm -hmm. You get all the different possibilities that you couldn't do with your start ship mining, building a station for the first time, destroying bigger ships, capturing bigger ships. And I just like that progression. Of course, I've had games where I've had a big empire with factories and complexes. And I do enjoy making sure that things, you know, run properly. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm always a very hands-on guy. I'm, I like being in a fighter ship. I like going up against other fighters or destroying surface elements and things like that. So I'm not really one of just sit back and throw a fleet at a problem. I like getting down and dirty with it. Coming back to the to the actual custom game start, you're currently actually defining and implementing specifically those, um, let's say, points that you can get from certain progress that you've made in the game. And then in result of that, what will be able to what you will be able to change in the custom game start, right? Like what what players will get and what they can customize eventually. Could you take us into that thought process a bit? Like, how do you decide such things? And yep. 
maybe what are some of the things that you as own when you're doing this uh, need to consider while while doing so yeah so of course there's so many different things that you can do in the x games and uh we break it down as trade fight build think usually but uh, that doesn't really translate to what this menu wants to show whether yeah. uh, like what is think uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll probably replace that with uh, the story choices you've made along the way and things like that but when it comes to what you achieve in the game and what it unlocks, uh, we've we tried to make sense of it, but we're still just, you know, putting a few achievements in a place and saying, oh, that sounds like it would unlock this. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a creative thing. It's like coming up with new achievements like we've done in the last few years. Yeah. And it's, it's a fun thing to do. We've always had statistics that you can look at in the game, but now we're just trying to pick those out and just present it in a way that makes sense in a menu to what the player would think it makes sense to. So how much money you've earned, mm -hmm. how much money you get in a game start, things like that. Mm -hmm. When we say achievements, we don't mean Steam achievements, right? There's nothing that the player actually unlocks that will pop up somewhere. It's, it's more like an internal thing. That's true. Um, sometimes they go hand in hand, like when you do a story choice, you'll probably get this, let's call it a milestone for the game start budget and an achievement will pop up at the same time. Oh, okay, I see. That was an easy way of uh, just saying, oh, we need a, a good place to unlock this. Ah, we already have achievements. <laughs> you know, it, it always helps to half the amount of work if you've already done it. Oh, sure, of course. <laughs> Well, um, thanks a lot for the details, Owen. Um, it's, it sounds really cool, and I'm sure our listeners will be very eager to try it out um, once it's included in the 410 beta. Yeah. Do you have anything else to share with the listeners <laughs> before we sign yeah. off? Well, I think it's important to link it with um, the other feature that was mentioned on the previous podcast. The whole reason why we want to have custom game starts that aren't modified is so that more people will have a chance to jump into the new ventures. Yeah. And... Uh, of course, unmodified saves are always more fun to debug than modified saves. So that's always a bonus on my side. Okay. Thanks for taking the time for this chat, Owen. All right. No problem. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So those were some first details on the custom game start feature and we hope you're looking forward to trying it out and playing around with it, um, experiencing X4 foundations in different and new ways. As of right now, it looks like the custom game start may not be included in the first beta version of 4.10, but as I mentioned already in this episode's intro, we regularly update the public beta once it has started and change things in between those phases. So at some point during the 4.10 beta, the custom game start feature will pop up and you'll be able to give it a go. Thank you for listening to episode two of the Inside Ubisoft podcast. And also thank you for your feedback so far on the first episode. I read everything attentively and I tried to optimize some things here and there. Um, this time around, for example, we have a short summary text on today's topic that will be released as a news item on Steam, our website, etc. So that you can already get a general idea of what is being talked about in the episode. Of course, when you hear me say this, you've already listened to the episode. So yeah, right. Anyway, <laughs> please subscribe to the podcast in your favorite podcast app or find us on youtube.com slash egosoft where you can also subscribe to our channel and like individual videos. Consider writing a review for X4 Foundations on Steam or GOG if you haven't already. It really does help. Thank you in advance. Thanks for tuning in and talk to you soon for the next episode of Inside Egosoft. This is Greg, signing off. <laughs>